With me now is Barrister and Legal Director at UK Lawyers for Israel, Natasha Hausdorf. Um, Natasha, you are not a signatory of, of this letter. In fact, you're, you're very angry about it. Um, what, do, what, do you, what are you concerned about? These lawyers say they've looked at, at what the international regulations are. They believe that Israel is in breach of international law and they say that the UK government should stop sending arms. Well, thank you. I'd say concerned rather than angry and deeply concerned, not least because, amongst other things, the letter includes a serious misstatement uh, as to what the International Court of Justice has determined thus far with respect to the case that South Africa has brought uh, against Israel. Um, charitably, it might be called an error. Indeed, that was uh, how the preeminent legal journalist Joshua Rosenberg termed it uh, earlier this morning. Uh, but it is a wholesale misrepresentation of what the ICJ's order of the 26th of January said. Uh, and uh, I'm extremely surprised in that context. Uh, either it is the case that those signatories to the letter haven't read this order, uh, or there must be some other explanation for it. Uh, the reason it's particularly concerning in the context of this further debate that we've been hearing about international law uh, and what advice the government may have been given is that if such advice uh, endorses the same flippant approach to real international law as this letter clearly has done, then I don't know how much store the government will be able to set by it. This is unfortunately a worsening situation in which international law is in fact being abused. It has become a serious casualty of this current conflict in, in the Gaza Strip between Israel and Hamas. Uh, and that has desperate consequences for international law far more broadly, not just in this respect. I spoke to, to one of those signatories an, an hour ago and he said he believed that, that since that ICJ ruling that the situation on the ground had worsened and it was his belief that genocide had happened. I mean, if an international court did rule that Israel had committed genocide, would it change anything for you? Well, let's be clear about the legal position that has been stated. Uh, that uh, has been put out publicly by the United States. Uh, Matthew Miller, the spokesperson for the State Department, confirmed again last week that there has been uh, no assessment of international humanitarian law violations by Israel. Other than that, what we've seen is conjecture uh, and, as I say, misrepresentations of what the highest court at the United Nations has held with respect to its January, January ruling and the question of plausibility. It's very clear to anyone that reads that order, and in fact, I was on Sky uh, with Samantha Washington uh, in the days after the order, stating this perfectly plainly. The court considered plausibility in the context of the case that South Africa brought against a consideration as to whether the rights South Africa was claiming fell under the convention. That has nothing to do with an assessment of Israel's conduct in Gaza. And by all accounts, when one listens to uh, the public legal positions put out so far by the United States, when one listens to legal uh, and military experts, some of whom have been on the ground in Gaza, the consistent message is that Israel not only upholds international humanitarian law, but its efforts to keep civilians and aid workers safe, to mitigate potential collateral damage are unprecedented in the history of armed conflict. And when one considers the urban armed conflict and the dense population uh, in the Gaza Strip that Hamas is seeking to militarise, to use to its advantage, to use civilians as human shields, to drive up the civilian casualty count as far as it can. This is what needs to be called out by the international community and by international lawyers in particular. What we have seen instead is a reprehensible moral equivalence being drawn between an international terrorist organisation, Hamas, uh, and a democratic accountable state, a law-abiding army in the form of the IDF. Uh, and this, unfortunately, this, this letter um, re, uh, redoubles um, doubles down uh, on those previous misrepresentations. And the critical thing here is that the public have been desperately misinformed uh, by these uninformed statements. Um, it may be that the international media for all, especially over the incredibly tragic incident that we saw uh, in the last few days with respect to uh, World Central Kitchen, uh, has in fact been driving many lawyers uh, to take this um, uh, immediate and, and, and in many respects, unfortunately, flippant position. Uh, but we really need to be careful uh, about allowing uh, the media, uh, lawyers to run away uh, with themselves in this respect. There are very significant consequences, not just for Israel, but also for all law-abiding states if international law uh, is being misrepresented and abused 
uh, in, in such a fashion. You, you say that Israel abides by international law, but of course we look at what happened just two days ago with, the, with these World Central Kitchen aid workers. There's been over 200 other aid workers killed and as many as 30,000 civilians have died in well, Gaza they're... since the October the 7th. Those are the only figures we have because journalists aren't able to get in there. I mean, you, you must look at this and think, you know, do you, do you have no questions about the legality of any of Israel's operations in there? Would the international media be putting out figures from Al-Qaeda and ISIS in the manner and fashion in which uh, many organisations have seemed to serve as a Hamas mouthpiece? They are the only figures that we have access to because and Israel are, will not allow are, journalists to get into well, Gaza. If, if we were in there, we'd be able to, we'd be able to, to independently verify them. But well, this is all may, we may are I suggest, able to do. May I suggest some critical questions which, uh, which journalists ought to be advancing with respect to these figures? Because there is no uh, breakdown between civilians and combatants. Uh, we know Israel has established uh, that it has killed um, 15,000 terrorists. Those are unaccounted for in the figures that this terrorist organization Hamas is putting out. The other aspect of the missing information here is how these people are said to have died. We know that Hamas is shooting its own civilians. We know that they have been bombing fleeing civilians. Uh, the Americans have confirmed this. We know also that Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad rockets that are fired from the Gaza Strip aiming towards Israeli civilians frequently fall short in the Gaza Strip, indiscriminately killing Palestinian civilians and uh, others, including aid workers. So this is, uh, th these are the um, critical analysis that needs to be put forward. But, but we also know that, but we also know that, that there are, there is a real risk of famine in the Gaza Strip and we know that there's been oh. real difficulty in getting aid into Gaza and that is something that the international community will put at the door of Israel. Well, let's be clear about what Israel has been doing and the capacity that COGAT, which is the IDF unit uh, whose purpose is to provide humanitarian assistance for civilians in armed conflict, COGAT have repeatedly stated that their capacity to inspect aid uh, far surpasses the aid that is going in and that the aid that has been mounting up post-inspection before it can be distributed by UN and other humanitarian organisations uh, has been increasing. The capacity that COGAT has currently uh, with respect to the two crossings, Kerem Shalom and Nitsana, is to inspect 44 lorries of aid an hour. That is uh, way above what the international community is seeking to, uh, to transport through. Uh, and so, again, there are deep and disturbing misrepresentations with respect to the aid also. But if we, just before we I'm, move well, on... I'm just taking it... Yeah, from, from what Lord Cameron, our Foreign Secretary, said yesterday, which is that he wants to see 500 trucks of aid going in every day. And he says the UK government wants to see this. It isn't happening. And, and they're going to be watching to see that it does, that Israel does allow these trucks in. Well, where are the trucks that are uh, intending to go through that are being stopped? I mean, again, this is, I'm sorry, not borne out by the facts on the ground and the reports that are daily and sometimes multiple times a day from COGAT as to their capacity uh, to inspect aid. But the same thing is true of the casualty figures. Uh, and, of course, if we compare this conflict to other armed conflicts around the world, uh, the global average that the United Nations puts out is a very disturbing nine civilians to every one combatant. Even taking Hamas figures here, uh, caveating them, or ignoring the caveats, I should say, that I have set out as to why they are unreliable uh, and why, in fact, they constitute misinformation. But even taking those for the sake of argument, um, Israel's prime minister has stated that the civilian to combatant ratio here is uh, in the region of one to one. One to one against nine to one globally, and so far as American uh, uh, forces in Iraq and Afghanistan are concerned, the figures that the US put out was three to one and five to one. So one to one or 1.6 to one, as I've seen some calculations, um, is unprecedented in the history of armed conflict and doesn't even take account of the intense combat that Israel is engaged in with Hamas terrorists who have spent 16 years uh, embedding themselves in civilian infrastructure, utilising hospitals, schools, mosques, uh, clinics and ambulances as part of their terror network. We have okay. it on authority from hostages that they were transported in ambulances. And we see now, as a result of what has happened at Al-Shifa and the intense fighting with hundreds of Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad terrorists, who the real war criminals here are. OK, Natasha Haustoff, there we must leave it. Legal Director at UK Lawyers for Israel. Thank you.